Well, we got a cold, gloomy morning this morning, and we actually finished up spraying our corn last week. Um, so I thought I would take you through this morning when we're not doing a whole lot in the fields and kind of show you what we've got going on in here. This is the uh, semi-trailer that we use to haul our water and our chemicals to mix our sprayer with. We've got a 1,600 gallon sprayer. Most of that is water. Um, and there's three tanks in this trailer. They're all 1,600 gallons, so we can fill our sprayer. If these are all full, we can fill the sprayer three times out of here. Um, these tanks are used to hold only water. We never want any chemical in those tanks because we don't want to have any kind of uh, chemical ever get blended into a tank that would hurt a certain crop because we've got specific chemicals that we have to use with specific crops. Those are all plumbed into here. Um, these are 250 gallon tanks of, of uh, different herbicides that are plumbed in so they get mixed in here and we mix them in with the water as it mixes in through there it all gets blended in through this hose if we're mixing in a smaller amount of chemicals this is the inductor here so we can pour the chemicals in there and we can uh, open that up and run it in through here and the motor's got a pump on it here so this engine is running it all the, all the time the pump will turn in there to pump the water out through the side of the trailer and then we've got a uh, large two inch hose here that comes out the side of the trailer and we connect this end to the sprayer so we can fill that that's how we do that that's the process we use for filling our sprayer and I'm gonna go through a little bit here and tell you what we were using on the corn just to kind of give you an idea the first product we're using here this is a surfactant which is not actually a herbicide it's not used to kill the weeds um, what a surfactant does is I'm, I'm not exactly sure of the the real science behind it but I know that it's made up of a linear molecule which attracts and repels water at the same time <clears throat> so if you pour water onto a weed that has kind of a waxy leaf and you can see that water kind of bead off it'll bead off the leaf and roll back roll down onto the ground what the surfactant does is it actually changes the molecular structure of the water and the chemical mix and it'll actually stick right to the leaf so you can see it stick to the leaf and make it shiny so it, it really just helps the the herbicides and the chemicals you're using to stick to those weeds so that the water doesn't roll off and it doesn't all end up on the ground because you need that herbicide to stick to the leaves um, this tank here this is our main product of what we're, we're using this is a product called Halix GT um, it's made up of three different chemicals Glyphosate, Callisto, and Dual. Um, glyphosate would be the main chemical in, uh, for what we use for trying to kill weeds. Um, glyphosate is also known as Roundup. Roundup is actually a brand name of glyphosate um, that was uh, started by a large chemical company that a lot of you probably know what I'm talking about. But um, basically glyphosate is Roundup. Um, we just have generic versions now. Um, and glyphosate is used only on GMO crops or genetically modified genetically engineered crops there's some debate on that and I will touch on that at some point but we believe GMO crops are safe we have grown all GMO crops for many years um, so that is our main weed killing product uh, the Callisto in it adds a little bit of punch um, just hits some of the more specific weeds a little bit harder uh, and uh, the, the, the dual in it has a little bit of residual and it helps fight a lot of the grasses that we have around these areas. Um, the last thing that we throw in our tank mix is uh, we're using this uh, generic or Atrex is what it's called. It's um, it's an atrazine, which there's a lot of debate over over atrazine. Also, atrazine has been used uh, probably since the 50s. I know it was around in the 60s, um, and they keep trying to they they keep testing it because there's a lot of debate over it. Um, but they they have never found anything to say that it's not safe. So for now, it's uh, cheaper and it's effective. It works well. So we're using it to really hit some of the some of the broadleaves that we have coming in our field, or some of uh, the specific weeds that have a large leaf on them. It really nails those good. It does a good job. So that gets blended into here, um, and that's what we're doing with the uh, sprayer. One other
Another quick thing I want to add is that uh, you see a couple 250 gallon totes sitting here. Um, I want to say that, uh, you know, farmers have, in when you look online sometimes you see uh, farmers have a bad reputation for drenching their soils in pesticides. That's not true at all. Um, we only want to apply the smallest amount that we have to because for one, we don't want any extra chemical in our soil. Um, and for two, it's more expensive. So there's no reason for us to drown our fields in pesticides and herbicides. Um, we spray a volume uh, on our corn. What we sprayed was 10 gallons to the acre. Um, so a sprayer, our sprayer is 1,600 gallons. That'll cover 160 acres at 10 gallons to the acre. Of that 1,600 gallons, there's a few gallons of surfactant. There's a few gallons of this Halex which is Roundup and those other things mix, and there's a few gallons of atrazine. Uh, what you're actually getting per acre of chemical is around that, uh, in that mix is probably around about a gallon per acre. Uh, and that's one gallon for an entire acre. The rest of what you see coming out of the booms on a sprayer is all water. So I just kind of wanted to make that clear that uh, even though you can see the water coming out of the booms, when the sun hits it right, you can see that coming out of there. Uh, most of that is actually water. One last thing that I wanted to hit on was glyphosate. I went over that kind of quickly. Um, glyphosate does have a bad reputation for being a dangerous chemical. If you listen to Dr. Oz, it's basically killing us all. Um, but if you listen to scientists, glyphosate is one of our safest chemicals available to us. And the fact that we've been able to use it for the last 20 years has allowed us to not have to use so many harsh chemicals that we were using in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Glyphosate is effective. Um, it, it's cheaper in some, some forms. And the fact is that it's just safer. Um, so there's no reason to not use glyphosate. I'm not sure why all the negativity and the bad reputation against it. I don't know how that started. Um, I know what's keeping it going. Um, but, uh, you know, of course, enough glyphosate or enough Roundup is going to kill a person uh, because the dosage makes the poison. However, in a concentrated dosage, uh, I know that table salt and caffeine are both more deadly than Roundup. Uh, so that was one other thing that I wanted to touch on. Thanks for watching and be sure you subscribe to the channel. For those of you who are just on Facebook, make sure you come over to YouTube often and search MN Millennial Farmer because I got several videos on here that I haven't posted to Facebook. So you never know uh, what, what new video you might see that you didn't know about. Millennial Farmer, out.